Okay, um, I think by the time I get done with all this cattle stuff, you guys are going to be vegetarians. Um, something, something I want to bring up, I'm trying to do this quick. I had um, really good questions, really good um, comments back and forth with Canadian Prepper on the cattle issue. And he brought up genetic diversity. And this is a super question. It's something I've dealt with for you know some years back, but it's a great question. Genetic diversity. In other words, if you had a herd of 10 cows and one bull, and he breeds those cows and has a they each have a female heifer. So now you have the bull, his ten cows, and his ten daughters. What do you do? You have an issue there with gen genetic diversity. What you gonna go get another bull? Okay. Are you gonna sell off those daughters? That's typically what happens. Sell off those daughters so you can maintain the same bull and then do it again, and that's how you make your your living or whatever. But there's there's a question there. So I'll give you some scenarios. I'm gonna to try to put some links down below. I gotta find a couple articles. Once I do, I'll attach to this, then I'll load this thing up. Um, you're in the SHTF. You've got your cattle, whatever they are. Let's see, you got your a bunch of cows. And you got one bull. And uh, first season you have a bunch of calves. Everything went pretty well. Half for boys, half for girls. Okay. Now, as they're getting older, they get close to 15 months, they'll start wanting to breed. So you now I've got a bunch of brothers, a bunch of sisters, and a father. And the mothers, too. Um, typically, culturally, the way we're raised, that, okay, we're, we're going to we're gonna have to do some sorting, some segregating here. Because we don't want so and so breeding so and so, you know, moms to sons and all this kind of thing. And there's true, there's, 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 that's a concern. Um, you also have the um, another aspect too is if, if uh, well, I'll put it as a question. What are you going to do? You can eat all the babies, eat all the offspring, so you don't have the problem. Then rebreed again the next year, and then eat all of those, so they don't become any sort of genetic problem. Then you do it again the next year and the next year. But all these generations of cattle you have, you haven't come across anybody else with any cattle. This is SHTF. You're, you could be the only game on this hemisphere. Okay? So you've been you've taken a father, a bull, bred him to ten females, and pretty much killed off, eaten, sold all the offspring. So there has not been any uh, just inbreeding. We'll call it in, in, no inbreeding. Okay? Well, pretty cows don't live that long. I mean, some cows, 7, 8, 10 years, it's, it's pretty much over. So this genetic plan we have, of this genetic diversity we're trying to maintain, if we keep this cycle, father breeds the cows, cows have the children, the children are gone, repeat the process, pretty soon the mothers die off, or even the bull dies off. What do you do? It's over. That's the question. Yeah, I have an answer. I'm not going to kick it out like that. But anyhow, it's something to think about. As far as cattle, livestock, that kind of deal. This has been answered. This has already been dealt with. Okay, But because of our Western culture, the way we think, and I'll actually blame this on the cattle industry, because they poo-poo this idea, um, because it, it's a huge economy, selling bulls. Every couple of years, a guy has a large herd. That, you know, After so many generations, they have to sell the bull off and buy another bull. bull cost, a bull could cost you $10,000. See? There's also artificial insemination. I'm not going to use a bull at all. I'm going to, uh, I can get online right now. I could order semen from South Africa, Wales, South Dakota, Argentina, impregnate my cattle with that artificial insemination, and have all kinds of genetic diversity going on out there. All right? Can't do that in the SHTF. That's that's pretty much going to be a done deal. That's a huge. That's a multi-gazillion dollar industry. Um, I did that one year. I had a bull, and this bull he sold for over a million dollars. I said, "How in the hell do you sell a bull for a million bucks?" Because his semen was twenty bucks a straw, and he sold. You think of how much semen is in one episode? That's a lot of straws. Okay. And uh, it was a show bull. It was, it was very expensive. He was the first one to break a million dollars. Um, a million dollars in sales, I should say. 
because they never sold them. Anyhow, so you got the SHTF, you got your cattle, you now have a breeding problem. You got a genetic problem, supposedly. Okay. Now go back. Let's go back before the train. And the cattle drives were taking cattle to the train, and the train would take the cattle to the slaughterhouse and all that stuff. But let's go prior to trains. I think trains were 18. This is all after the Civil War. But let's say between the Civil War and trains. Cattle have been a big deal in uh, in this continent in North America for a long time, as was as it was also in the European countries. Um, but prior to transportation, you didn't have a whole lot of genetics available to you. You didn't have other bulls available to you. I might be in this county and have this herd. I might go to another guy's county because I like his cattle, the way they look, and I might buy a bull from him and bring it back over here. Okay. But it wasn't as big a deal as it is now. People, oh, we've got to have genetic diversity. I'm saying genetic diversity, and this will upset a lot of people. Um, I'm not worried about that. That's not going to be an issue. Uh, there's, I'll, I'll put some links down below to some articles on line breeding. Now this gets me in all kinds of trouble with both cattlemen and people that just think it's, you know, they get the ooh feeling, you know, because it sounds like incest. It's inbreeding is what it is, but it's a form of inbreeding. It's a very select, disciplined form of inbreeding. And there's different variations of it. Some people don't want to talk about it. They don't like to think about it. If you have a purebred dog, he's got line breeding in his upline. He's got a relative that's in, the, in, his, in his family tree more than once. Okay, now people say, well, I don't know about that, but how do you get the hyena, the wild dog, the wolf, and the coyote, and somehow create a Yorkie or a Shih Tzu? Figure that one out. How'd that happen? That wasn't natural selection or some environment. That was man those are man-made dogs. Look at the Great Dane. Love Great Danes. One of my favorite dogs. We had Great Danes. Absolutely worthless animal in a wild environment. He's large. Not for hunting. He was meant to look good at the foot of a prince or a king or a queen and has the coat of a chihuahua. Kid, that guy can't last a season out there in the wild. He'd be done. Okay, Man-made dog. Man-made breed. Many of these dogs we have here, man-made breeds. How do they do that? A form of line breeding. Inbreeding had to happen to create that. Okay, but When we think inbreeding, we think retardation. You know, we're not talking about people. We're not doing this with people. But this is something that's done with animals to create breeds, okay? Personally, I am not interested in creating breeds. I create bloodlines, okay? I have a, a group of cattle out there, nothing special about them. The only thing they have going for them is they fit my environment. The environment I've placed them in, they fit. How do I know that? Well, for one, they were born here. Two, they've been able to keep themselves sound and healthy in my environment to rebreed. So they've, they have high conception rates. Okay. One, it survived birth. Two, it bred back. And again, and again, and again. That cow fits here. And their offspring is, have, been, uh, have been of quality. So I'm looking at, I have a, a, a specific bull pattern that I use. I have a certain way I breed. But I do, it's inbreeding. I do a form of line, that's what they call line breeding. Okay. And I'll, I'll say, I'll try to put some information down below. If you're in an SHTF and you're seeking genetic diversity, chances are you will have none. You're going to have to pull sons out of your herd to rebreed the rest of the herd, the rest of the family. And there's specific ways that this has been done for generations. It just doesn't get a whole lot of press or talked about because now we have all this genetic diversity available. I think all the genetic diversity that we have through semen and outcrossing and all this has actually destroyed many of our famous breeds. And I won't go into that, so that's a long, you know, that's debatable. Okay, we've had too much, we have too large a gene pool now. Okay, and you see there's certain breeders out there that figure this out, they're onto this. Okay, and you're looking, when I buy a cattle, if I go, personally I don't buy cattle, I have no reason to. I'm pulling animals out of my herd all the time. If I have a new sire, a new bull that I'm looking for, he's coming out of my herd. Well, gee, how does that work, seller? I'm not looking for genetic diversity, and I do not have retarded cows or deformed, you know, retarded babies and all this stuff. Yes, that could happen, but it, you have to have this little bit of science behind this. Um, but the reason I point this out, just trying to bring the question, you know, whether it was chickens, and, and if you look at, uh, there's a whole bunch of industries, pets and this stuff, where line breeding is common. Not goats, big time line bred. All my goats are line bred. I've got that father going two generations deep. 
and I have great looking goats. You know, and, but then you tell people, hey, who's, who's buck are you using? I said, I don't. I don't buy bucks. I've got, they come right out of the herd. <gasps> they get all freaked out. But how did you, how's my herd look so good? I'm line breeding. Okay. Same thing with sheep. Sheep, big time in sheep line breeding. They're pulling the, the, um, someone says, well, how do you find a good father in your group? How do you find, where, is, where do you get your good cows? You have good cows. You, if you have animals on your property, you know who, who, who's thriving on that property. And those are the animals that you'll create your bloodline with. You'll breed those animals with your bull and those babies stay and go back into your, into your uh, breeding program. You have some cows that don't do so hot, but they breed every day, every year, or they might have a bad attitude. Well, we typically sell those babies or eat those babies or whatever the case is. But you have your breeding group, and that's the that's where the, the line breeding comes in. Um, I've given away too much already, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll find these articles. I'll put them down below. But just a question. If you were one of those going to have livestock in the SHTF, or you'd like to have that kind of thing, you're not going to have a genetic pool to pull from. You're not going to have genetic diversity. You might have a guy up the road that has another bull they could swap out, but that's only going to get you so far. Um, what happens, and, and think about this in the wild, whether it's moose, the lion, um, whatever. You have a pack. You have the father, his harem, his females, and all the, the offspring. The father doesn't chase the daughters off. He chases the boys off. Okay. People say, well, in the wild, they know not to breed their mother. No, they don't. If, the, if, a, if a son comes back, kills off the father, and breeds his mother, chances are the offspring is going to die. It'll be too close of a breeding. And that bloodline stops. So there's no, there's no genetic, oh gosh, you'll have bad genetics. No, because the offspring's messed up. It's not going to rebreed. It's out. It'll be, it's going to get picked off. Okay. Nature deals with this all the time. The weak die off, the strong will thrive. In some cases, many cases where the, the father is breeding the daughter, you have excellent stock coming from that. And that will continue. Where it doesn't work, it stops. It's all bloodline. Okay. So just something to throw out there. I get a lot of flack for this, but I tend to, I kind of like to watch people squirm when I talk about it. But it's one of those, uh, it's, it's just a, you know, what are you going to do in a, uh, line breeding is much closer to natural, only our hand is in it. Than what we try to do typically by just outcrossing, 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 you know, killing the bloodline with every two generations, we start a whole new bloodline and we're just not getting anywhere. We're, we're, we've washed it out. But that's my opinion. Yeah, just a question if you got livestock, what are you going to do for your breeding? That's something you have to look at. Maybe these articles will help.